Hello everyone. Welcome back to lesson 4 of elements of mechanical engineering. So in the last three lessons we did discuss about energy, sources of energy, formation of various energy sources and its conversion. Now let's move on to the next topic under module 1 which is about the concepts of thermodynamics. So in this particular lesson you will be taken through the basic concepts of thermodynamics and its loss as well as the application. So what is thermodynamics? So as you are aware thermodynamics is a branch of science that deals with energy interaction. Energy interaction means heat and work and its effect on properties. So examples of various thermodynamic systems are the turbines, pumps, engines, compressor, AC and many other systems which we have been using in our day to day life. So as the name says thermodynamics, it means converting heat into mechanical energy. Thermo means heat, dynamics means mechanical motion. So thermodynamics deals with the process of converting heat energy into mechanical energy or converting heat into work. So thermodynamics is a science of energy. It is a science of energy which studies the relationship between the heat and the work. And the other aspects of energy transfer that takes place in a device such as refrigerators or heat pumps or IC engines. So these relationships are normally governed by four laws of thermodynamics which are very important and fundamental to the laws of nature. So before we discuss all these laws of thermodynamics, let us understand what are the thermodynamic system and what are the terminologies we do use in the thermodynamic system. So what is a thermodynamic system? A thermodynamic system is defined as a volume of space containing the item or a matter for our analysis. So consider a cylinder fitted with a moving piston. Inside that we have some working fluid or the working gas. So what is happening within that volume is what we call it as a thermodynamic system. Okay, It is nothing but a defined volume of space containing a mass in it. Okay, the surface of the thermodynamic system forms its boundary. That means to say, if you consider a cylinder, so what is within the cylinder is the system. What is beyond the cylinder is what we call it as the surrounding or the environment. So any system if you take, so what is there within the boundary is what we call it as a system and what is outside the boundary is what we call it as the surrounding. The system and the surrounding is being separated by a boundary. A boundary is the one which separates a system and a surrounding. So when it comes to thermodynamic system, basically there are four types of system that can exist. Isolated system and adiabatic system, open system and closed system. So let us discuss what is the difference between the isolated system and adiabatic system and what are the differences between the closed system and the open system. So what are the difference? An adiabatic system is a one which has no transfer of energy or matter with the surrounding. That means to say whatever happens that happens within the system only. If exchange of heat takes place within the system, if exchange of work takes place within the system, if there is a transfer of energy within the system. So such system is what we call it as an adiabatic system. So nothing goes out of the system, nothing comes into the system. So that is what we call it as adiabatic system. So then what is isolated system? An isolated system is also similar to that an adiabatic system but here we consider that it doesn't have any surrounding environment. Whereas adiabatic system it has got a surrounding environment but in an isolated system we consider the entire thing as one system and there is nothing beyond that system. So that is what we call it as an isolated system. So as I said an adiabatic system has a surrounding and whereas it 
Isolatedism doesn't have any surrounding environment across it. So whatever happens, that happens within the system in case of an adiabatic system and there is no gain or loss of energy but can be interchanged that can be interchanged but internal can energy internal energy can also change work can also be done by the system but everything happens within the system but whereas in case of an isolated system energy is actually conserved energy is actually conserved so there is nothing beyond the system there is no environment across the system so therefore energy is actually conserved in an idea in an isolated system so whereas in case of adiabatic system since everything happens within the system so change of heat or change of work everything happens within the system so internal energy within the system can change but since we have considered there is no surrounding outside the system in case of an isolated system so there cannot be change in the internal energy so these are the basic differences between an adiabatic system and an isolated system now let us see what is the difference between an open system and a closed system so what is a closed system and what is an open system an open system is one in which both mass as well as energy cross the system got it in case of a open system mass also can go out mass also can come in it can also go out it can also come in that is energy transfer can be out of the system or into the system as well as mass can also go out of the system and can also come into the system such system is what we call it as open system the best example for an open system is a turbine so in case of a turbine high pressure steam enters that means a steam is entering the system there's a mass entry is happening it is also entering the system so it gives away all the energy to it and thereby the turbine converts heat energy into mechanical energy got it that means a heat energy has been converted into work but after that what is happening to the steam after giving away all the heat energy and converted into mechanical energy so what will be the turbine exhaust so turbine exhaust will be a low pressure steam with low temperature isn't it so mass is also going out of the system and the steam which is going out is also having low temperature so it also entered mass also entered mass is also going out so such system is what we call it as an open system so what is a closed system then so closed system is the one where only exchange of heat takes place between the surrounding and the system but no mass transfer so mass will not exchange only heat transfer heat can come in to the system or it can go out of the system but no exchange of mass so such a system is what we call it as an closed system so the best example is our pressure cooker okay once we eat so obviously what happens it is being transferred and thereby we cook our rice there is no no question of mass contained in the pressure cooker coming out of it isn't it so such kind of a system is what we call it as an closed system so as i said in case of an open system exchange of matter happens with the surrounding but in case of a closed system there is no exchange of mass with the surrounding so mass of the system will vary with the time it is time dependent parameter and mass of the system is constant because there is no exchange so this open system have boundaries which is not closed which is not closed if it is not closed then only, then only mass can transfer out or come into the system isn't it so boundary it, it does have a boundary but that boundaries are not closed so it is open for exchange of mass also as well as heat also whereas in case of isolated system boundaries are completely closed thereby thereby the mass transfer is totally avoided so such kind of a system is what we call it as a closed system so these are the basic differences between a thermodynamic system so adiabatic system and isolated system open system versus the closed system so that is what we call it as a thermodynamic system thermodynamic system is we are defining a system and we are defining a boundary and beyond that boundary whatever is there is what we call it as surrounding between the boundary 
through the boundary between the system and the surrounding so it can go out it can come in mass can go out mass can come in so based on this we have this open system and closed system and we have adiabatic system and isolated system so in practical we have an adiabatic system and not an isolated system we have an open system as well as closed system in our practical application so let us move on to what are the thermodynamic properties we we'll have to study in this concept of thermodynamics basically properties of a system when i said the system is what we have defined a contained or a controlled volume within which heat and the work uh, exchange or change takes place so within that system what are the properties we can look for so such properties is what we call it as thermodynamic properties so these thermodynamic properties are basically classified into two categories one is known as intensive property and the other one is known as extensive property so what is the difference between intensive and extensive so intensive property means which is dependent on the mass that means to say there are certain properties or parameter which varies when there is an variation in the mass that means to say if mass changes something so automatically it affects some other properties so that is what we call it as intensive property which is independent of mass sorry which is independent of mass whereas extensive part uh, property is the one where which is dependent on the mass so intensive property it is not dependent on the mass so irrespective of whether the mass changes or not the properties will not change so that is what we call it as intensive property extensive property if something happens to the mass correspondingly some other property changes so that is what we call it as an extensive property so what is intensive property examples of intensive properties are pressure it is not dependent on mass temperature it is not dependent on mass density it is not dependent on the mass concentration melting point boiling point surface tension viscosity these are the some of the intensive properties which is independent of the mass of the system whereas there are certain properties which are dependent on the mass of the system which we call it as an extensive property like mass volume internal energy heat capacity enthalpy entropy ans energy and gibbs energy so on right so this is the basic difference between the thermodynamic properties intensive and extensive so before we move on to the laws of thermodynamics let us know what are the terminologies that are used in our thermodynamic system so state of a system so what do you mean by a state of a system it is a condition it is a condition at a specific time that is fully identified by the values of a suitable set of parameters known as state variables or state parameters or thermodynamic variables see when all the thermodynamic properties such as pressure volume internal energy mass etc of the system if they attain a set value or a set value or a fixed value then the system is in a particular state so that means say whatever the state i was expecting if it has attained that particular state then we say that that system has attained the required state of properties if all the properties of the system have been fixed to a certain values a change in the state is usually characterized by change in the values of one or more properties if something say for example if the temperature changes what happens if the temperature changes so density changes if the density changes volume changes isn't it if the temperature changes the pressure decreases volume increases isn't it because why volume is increasing because change in the density it becomes lighter when it becomes lighter it expands as it expands the volume increases so that is what we call it as the state of a system so a change of the state so unless and until if nothing happens we can we say that it has attained the required state if there is a change in the state that change in the values are characterized by some other change in the some other properties 
isn't it so in a thermodynamic system we always deals with an equilibrium state so what is an equilibrium state in equilibrium state there is no unbalanced potentials within the system everything should be balanced so according to the temperature the pressure should be maintained according to the pressure the volume should be maintained that is what we call it as thermodynamic equilibrium system if the temperature changes the volume or pressure changes the pressure changes automatically volume changes so that might that is what we call it as change in the system but at any given point of time there cannot be an unbalanced system if the temperature changes that has to in turn give rise to change in the pressure that in turn has to give rise to change in the volume right so that is what we call it as state of a system then what do you mean by thermodynamic process when a system change its state from one equilibrium state to another equilibrium state then the path it has taken is what we call it as thermodynamic process see in this particular sketch if you just see you have a cylinder fitted with a piston it is being subjected to heat if you can just see a pv diagram pressure versus volume diagram as it is being subjected to heat so before it is being heated what there is no change in the temperature so then we say that the system is at rest the system is at rest that means to say we have all the fixed properties as of now before supplying any heat as soon as i start supplying heat what happens temperature within the cylinder increases as the temperature increases the pressure decreases as the pressure decreases how the pressure decreases because as i increase the temperature the volume increases why the volume is increasing because there is a change in the density as you increase the heat the density decreases so thicker working fluid will become thinner working fluid as it becomes thinner working fluid it has to occupy more volume thereby it starts pushing the piston up that means to say we add an lesser volume and that volume is now being increased as the volume increases will not the pressure increase so earlier same amount or same mass of fluid was being contained in a small volume after supply of heat because of change in the density there will be an increase in the volume due to which the piston is moving up thereby increasing the contained volume as the volume increases the same mass is now being expanded to an increased volume that means this is the pressure automatically drops isn't it as the volume increases the pressure drops so that is what you can make out in this particular animation so that is what we call it as thermodynamic process thermodynamic process means when a system changes its state from an equilibrium state to another equilibrium state at any given point of time there is no unbalanced forces so before supplying it it is at one thermodynamic system or one equilibrium state after supply of it it reaches to one more equilibrium state it has to move from one equilibrium state to another equilibrium state at any given point of time there can't be any unbalanced properties or unbalanced thing within the systems okay so that is what we call it as thermodynamic so before eating it is in one equilibrium state after eating it is at another equilibrium state so what is before eating less volume high pressure less temperature isn't it after eating what is happening low pressure high volume high temperature got it so it has reached from one equilibrium state to another equilibrium state so that changing from one equilibrium state to another equilibrium state is what we call it as thermodynamic process so same thermodynamic cycle or a cyclic process so any of the thermodynamic uh, process is basically a cyclic process so what do you mean by cyclic process so if we start from a point and if we come back to the same point again to repeat the cycle so that is what we call it as a cyclic process when a process or a processes are performed on a system in such a way that the final state and the uh, initial state are identical got it if you can see in this particular graph it is starting at one point and it is coming back to the same point see initially it has started with p1 point 
so as there is a change in the volume and uh, uh, change in the volume change in the pressure so automatically what is happening it moves from p1 to p2 from p2 to p3 and back to p4 and again it is coming back to p1 pressure so once it completes one thermodynamic cycle so it has to start from the same initial condition and come back to the same initial condition before starting the second cycle so that is what we call it as the cyclic process so starting at the same point and ending at the same point is what we call it as a cyclic process so starting moving around and coming back to the same point is what we call it as one cycle if you want to repeat the same cycle again and again so initial state and the final state should be the same or identical so that is what we call it as thermodynamic cycle or a cyclic process so there are some of the properties we've been discussing about so one such property and very important property is a temperature so what is temperature temperature is nothing but which measures the physical property or the physical quantity of hotness or coldness of a body or a system isn't it so temperature is nothing but it measures the hotness and coldness of a body with respect to some other standard with respect to some other standard so temperature is the thermodynamic magnitude that shows the thermal energy content of a body with respect to another body so heat content of a body will depend on its temperature its mass and material heat energy is always transferred from an object having higher temperature to an object at lower temperature isn't it so as the temperature decreases the kinetic energy of the particle will decrease at some point the kinetic energy of particles will attain zero or will reach zero and that temperature at which the kinetic energy reaches zero is what we call it as absolute zero temperature temperatures are normally measured by using various instruments you must be aware that uh, thermometer thermocouples thermistors pyrometers so these are some of the instruments which we use to measure the temperature temperature means the quantity of hotness of coldness of a system with respect to some other thing okay so temperature can be measured using various temperature scale various temperature scale so we have three different scales which we use for temperature measurement so one is what we call it as a kelvin scale the other one is what we call it as a celsius scale as well as sometimes we do measure in terms of fahrenheit but most of the standard measurement of temperature is kelvin temperature as well as celsius temperature so what is kelvin temperature in an interactive system the basic unit of temperature is kelvin a kelvin temperature is where the scale has an absolute zero or zero point as its scale that means to say when the kinetic energy of the system attains zero so as i said it we say that the system has an absolute zero temperature that is what we call it as zero degree or zero kelvin temperature so in case of kelvin there is no negative temperature what we measure it is always positive temperature because we have attained zero and the kinetic energy of the particles has reached zero and apart from kelvin we do use celsius scale to measure the temperature of the body with respect to something else so next one of the important property of a thermodynamic system is the work so what is work work is nothing but transfer of energy associated with force acting through a distance acting through a distance you just consider a cylinder here i have shown that here see here i have shown a cylinder here so this is fitted with a movable piston it is fitted with a movable piston if you can just see here what is the position of the piston initially and what is the position of the cylinder a piston here if you can just see there when there is an increase in the volume of the 
gas or the matter or the working fluid within the cylinder what happens when there is an increase in the volume the piston has to move up the piston has to move up so that means to say we will be able to deliver work out of it that means to say we are getting reciprocating motion isn't it the piston moves up means what we are getting mechanical energy in the form of reciprocatory motion isn't it so here we have shown two pressures one is known as the pressure of the gas inside the cylinder and one is the external pressure so internal pressure will be acting on the inner side of the piston and external pressure will be acting on the outer side of the piston if the inner pressure is lesser than the external pressure what happens it tries to push the piston down that means to say work is being done but not by the cylinder but is on the cylinder isn't it on the cylinder if the external pressure is more than the internal pressure piston still moves still we are getting mechanical energy but what is that the work is done on the system it is not being done the by the system it is done on the system the system is not giving the work the surrounding is giving work to the system isn't it when the external pressure is more than the internal pressure so see on to the second the cylinder what is it is just the reverse the internal pressure of the gas is more compared to the external pressure that means to say work is being given from the system to the surrounding then we call it as work is done by the system work is done by the system got it so that is the system that is the difference so work can be done by the system also or work can be done on the system also so work is nothing but what quantity of energy that flows across the boundary it has to flow across the boundary right so there is this entire cylinder is one system so whatever there outside the cylinder is what we call it as surrounding isn't it the cylinder surface is what we call it as the boundary so in both the sketches you can see that work is done on the system and work is done by the system isn't it so there is an exchange of energy there is an exchange of energy which is giving you a work whether work is done on the system or by the system anyway energy is being transferred into uh, into in the form of work okay so quantity of energy that flows across the boundary between the system and the surrounding which gives rise to change in the height of the mass or change in the volume means what change in the volume change in the volume means change in the moment of the piston change in the moment means make basically we are getting mechanical reciprocatory motion that means the work is done either by the system or on the system whatever it is got it so that is what we call it as work so normally how do we measure the work done by the system we know that p x is the external pressure and p gas is the internal pressure so difference in the pressure is the one which is acting on the piston so p external pressure minus p internal pressure is the actual force that is moving the piston up and down isn't it so that force being applied on the piston it moves the piston by a distance delta x isn't it it moves the piston by a delta x so this difference in the pressure between the internal and external is the one which is pushing the piston up or down by distance l so that force into distance moved is the actual work done by the system or on the system so depending on whether it is on or by the system isn't it so distance moved by the piston due to this difference in the pressure so this difference in the pressure is the force acting on the piston and that force is moving the piston by a distance delta x so the force into change in the distance is the measure of the work is the measure of the work so one more important property is the heat one more important property is the heat so what is heat heat is nothing but the quantity of energy that flows across the boundary so it has to go out of the system or it has to come into the system whether it goes out or come in it has to pass through the boundary isn't it it is nothing but the heat that flows across the boundary between the system and the surrounding because of the temperature difference so it cannot normally flow one has to be at high temperature the other has to be at lower temperature if the system is having high temperature and the surrounding is having low temperature heat flows from system to surrounding 
if the surrounding is having high temperature and the system is having low temperature heat transfer from surrounding to system so it's a natural process where heat has to flow from a body of higher temperature to a body of lower temperature if there is a temperature difference exists between the system and uh, the surrounding then only it has to flow the heat will keep on flowing till it attains an equilibrium position what do we mean by equilibrium position the temperature of the system and the temperature of the surrounding as long as it doesn't become equal till that there will be an exchange of heat between the system and surrounding so heat is nothing but the energy that is flowing between the system and the surrounding through the boundary how it flows due to the difference in temperature due to difference in temperature so now these are the basic terminology terminologies what we need to know what is that the pressure volume temperature work and heat so these are the basic concepts of thermodynamics now let us see what are the laws of thermodynamics that is governing the flow of heat or the work being done by the system see heat and work that basically basically interconvertible or interconvertible isn't it so there are various laws of thermodynamics which we need to study basically there are four laws of thermodynamics which we need to study first one is a zeroth law first law of thermodynamics second law of thermodynamics and third law of thermodynamics so zeroth law of thermodynamics it deals with equilibrium state so what is thermal equilibrium so that is what the zeroth law states about the first law is about energy conservation and how it has been converted from one form to another form the second law of thermodynamics is about the flow of energies and how to equilibrate it and the third law of thermodynamics about the driving force for equilibration that has been uniquely defined with respect to storage of energy so let us see one by one these laws of thermodynamics the first let us discuss what is zeroth law of thermodynamics so zeroth law of thermodynamics is very simple to state if two thermodynamic systems are in thermal equilibrium with the third system then they are in thermal equilibrium with each other that mean to say if a is in equilibrium with b and a is in equilibrium with c so that mean to say b and c are in thermal equilibrium so let us say that a measures t1 degree temperature and b2 measures b measures t2 degree and c measures t3 so since a is in equilibrium with b and a is in equilibrium with c that means to say t1 is equal to t2 t1 is equal to t3 so that means to say obviously t2 must be equal to t3 isn't it t to must be equal to t3 so that is what the zeroth law is all about the zeroth law states that if two bodies are in thermal equilibrium with a third body then they are also in thermal equilibrium with each other for example if i just measure the temperature of an hot water using a using a mercury thermometer i'm just giving an example so let uh, t1 be the temperature of the water T1 is the temperature of the water, and mercury cannot come in direct contact with the water, right? So thermometer means it is a glass thermometer which contains mercury in it. So mercury is one body, one body. The glass which is holding that is another body or another system, and the water which I am trying to measure the temperature is another system. If T1 is the temperature of the water. T2 will be the temperature of the glass bulb which is holding that mercury, and T3 is the temperature of the mercury. So here the mercury will not come in direct contact with the water. So what is coming in direct contact with the water? The bulb, the glass bulb. On one side it is in contact with the water, whereas on the inner side it is in contact with the mercury, isn't it? So that means to say T1 and T2 are same. T1 and T2 are same. So, water is in equilibrium with the glass bulb. If I see the inside, so glass bulb is in thermal equilibrium with the mercury. So then, I can't I say that 
temperature of the water is being measured by the mercury means the equilibrium of water and the mercury isn't it are they not in thermal equilibrium so thermal equilibrium of water and the thermal equilibrium of mercury so that is what we call it as zeroth law of thermodynamics which says that if two bodies are in thermal equilibrium with the third one obviously the there is also a thermal equilibrium between each other so that is the zeroth law of thermodynamics so what does the first law of thermodynamics deals with say heat is a form of energy and in the thermodynamic process they are being subjected to principle of conservation of energy what is mean by conservation of energy as you know that energy can neither be created nor destroyed but it can be only be converted from one form to another form so whatever we are talking about heat and the work they are basically interconvertible interconvertible so if the energy or the heat decreases it has to give rise to work if the work decreases it has to give rise to heat so that mean to say the first law of thermodynamics is nothing but the principle of conservation of energy which means that energy cannot be created not destroyed but however it can be converted from one form to another form we'll go back to our same uh, example of uh, consider a cylinder with a movable piston filled with a gas in it isn't it so we supply heat from outside to the cylinder what happens what happens the wall containing that gas is what we call it as a boundary isn't it so movable piston is the one which provides the work isn't it by expanding or by moving up and down see if q is the quantity of heat supplied suppose if i supply q quantity of heat to the cylinder and w is the work done by the system so you are supplying q is the quantity of heat that you are supplying to the cylinder so as you supply it what happens density decreases density decreases means the volume increases as the volume increases it pushes the piston up that means to say the piston is moving up means it is delivering you work w isn't it so there is no destroying the energy the heat whatever we supplied so it is being converted into work there is no loss of any energy there there is no loss of energy that is what we call it as the first law of thermodynamics that means to say when a closed system undergoes a thermodynamic cycle the heat transfer the net heat transfer is equal to the net work transfer so q is the quantity of heat being supplied and w is the work done by the system okay so that can be given by it's a cyclic process it's a cyclic process that is the reason we have taken an integral of delta q is equal to integral of cyclic integral of delta w that is net change in the heat is equal to net change in the work so that is the first law of thermodynamics which says there won't be any change in the energy only thing is the energy has changed the form from heat form to work form energy can neither be created nor destroyed but it can only be converted from one form to another form see any system will not be 100% efficient so whatever the work whatever the work we are delivering will it be actually equal to the quantity of heat that is being added to the system in practical it is not so in practical it is not so so if q is the amount of heat supplied and w is the work done in practical q is will not be equal to w because there will be losses by the heat by the time the heat transfers through the boundary then to the gas and that gas absorbing heat and then increasing its volume and giving you the work so during this transmission process there are some losses that loss doesn't mean that we are totally losing that energy no those loss are nothing but the energy of the system is increasing that is what we call it as internal energy okay the change in the internal energy of the system is equal to heat added to the system minus the work done as i said if q is the amount of heat supplied to the system 
and W is the work done to the system, practically Q will not be equal to W because during this process some amount of heat is being observed by the system. So when the system observes some heat, what happens? There is an increase in the internal energy. There is an increase in the internal or change in the internal. So before I supply heat to the system, what happens? That mass or that gas contained in the cylinder will have some energy in it, isn't it? After supplying it, its energy increases. And that increase in energy is what we call it as change in internal energy. Okay. So it will not completely convert all the heat energy into work. A part of the energy is consumed by the system to increase its energy itself. So that is what we call it as change in internal energy that mean to say that mean to say q must be equal to w plus the change in the internal energy isn't it so no percent no no system is 100 percent efficient to convert all the work into or all the heat into work some energy is being consumed by the system so that means to say we can write this equation as q is equal to w plus the change in the internal energy so what is the change in the internal energy it is nothing but the difference between the heat added to the system and the work done by the system isn't it if the system has to work first it has to energize itself isn't it so some amount of it is being consumed by the system and then only it does work so the change in the internal energy can be measured by subtracting the work done by the system from the heat added to the system. Okay, Even though the first law of thermodynamics says that energy can neither be created nor destroyed, but it can be converted from one form to another form. Yes, there is no loss of energy. Whatever heat is being supplied, it has been converted into some other form. So majority of heat has been converted into work and only few percentage of it is being converted into gain in the internal energy. So this is the first law of thermodynamics. So in this particular lesson, we did learn about the basic concepts of thermodynamics and in the basic concepts of thermodynamics, we did learn what you mean by a state of a system, what is a process, what is a cycle, especially thermodynamic cycle, what do you mean by temperature, work and heat how work and heat are interconvertible and that can be explained by the loss of thermodynamics. We did touch upon only two laws of thermodynamics, the zeroth law of thermodynamics and the first law of thermodynamics. So zeroth law of thermodynamics deals with, deals with thermal equilibrium whereas the first law of thermodynamics deals with energy conservation. Energy conservation means energy can neither be created nor destroyed but it can only be converted from one form to another form so these are the learning outcome of this lesson four so more to learn about thermodynamics in the next lesson see you again in the next lesson thank you